Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Newly appointed ZANU PF National Political Commissar threatens a repeat of 2008 violence. Newly appointed ZANU PF National Political Commissar, Right Lieutenant General Engelbert Ryuj has sent shivers down people's spines after he warned supporters gathered at Wang Ma Business Center in Gyuta to be mindful of the violence unleashed onto the country after his party lost the 2008 general elections to MDCT. He said people should always remember 2008 as the country hurdles towards the 2018 general elections expected within the next seven months. Hundreds of people were maimed in torture camps in Mass Bingo, women are underscored and scores of people killed in the worst election violence ever experienced in the province. Ironically just 200 meters from where Ryuj addressed last week's meeting was a torture base where civil servants including teachers were subjected to all forms of punishment and humiliation and the wounds are still fresh. Ryuj who declared that ZANU PF will rule Zimbabwe because the Kamad Hongi and Renai Anga, until forever, also reminded supporters of the way former President Mugabe was removed from power last November. People at the rally also attended by the Mirror said although Ryuj called for unity and peace, his warnings on 2008 had a chilling effect as some lost family members at the time. Ryuj was speaking at an event to celebrate the return of Bupurai Togarapi, the National Youth Secretary deposed at the height of Lacoste and G40 fights within ZANU-PF. The event was attended by ZANU-PF Chief Whip Love Matuk. Masvingo Provincial Chairman Ezra Chad Zamira, Harare Youth Chairman Godfrey Gom and other high-ranking party officials. Togarapi comes from Uta South and is believed to be eyeing former Minister of State for Masvingo, Paul Chimans's parliamentary seat. Ryuj said he came to Masvingo in 2008 when things were bad and he corrected the situation. Ryuj who was a serving member of the Zimbabwe National Army at the time said he again led the party's campaigns in the 2013 general elections and ZANU-PF made a clean sweep of the 26 seats on the table. We are getting towards important elections this year. I came here in 2008 when things were bad. I don't know where Masvingo had got the spirit and I came and sorted things out. I came back again in 2013 and led the campaign team and I moved around the province addressing rallies and the results were impressive and this saw the current party president giving Masvingo the post of political commissar. I expect you to give ZANU PF all seats in Masvingo now that I am full time in politics, said Ryuj. Political commentator Dr. Fidel Isduri described Ryuj's speech as tragic as it did not augur well for the country's new political dispensation that seeks to restore international confidence and attract investment to the country's ailing economy. He said the speech gives credence to views held by skeptics that Zimbabwe is indeed under military rule and there will be no free and fair elections in the country this year. Ryuj's threats are unfortunate. In terms of foreign policy in President Than Gagwa's appeal to local and foreign investors for investments. Re-engagement requires guarantees of a safe and secure economic and political environment, said Dr. Dury. MDC Alliance spokesperson Professor Welshman Cube said the group has carried out two coups in a space of 10 years and they don't change. You must understand that Ryuj was the one assigned to commit murder and torture in Masvingo in 2008 and these are the same people who carried out a coup against Svan Iri in 2008. It only shows the nature of ZANU PF where a leopard never changes its spots, said Q. NPP spokesperson Jeffrey Zinchitondo said Ryuj should not behave in such a manner as his own relatives can also be caught in between the violence. Mugabe offers to return externalized funds, appeals to other high-profile government officials to follow suit. Zimbabwe's former president Robert Mugabe and his family have heeded President Moon and Gagwa's call to return externalized funds. 
In his letter dated January 7, 2018, the Mugabes said they wanted to lead the way by returning funds to government coffers and appealed to other high-profile government officials to follow suit. Mr Mugabe said he had not been pressured to take this move. He urged all Zimbabweans to work in harmony and support the incumbent president. He also blasted his former spin doctor, Jonathan Moyo's statement that the military's intervention was a coup. The military were targeting criminals like Moyo, Kasakuir, Chombo, Mfoko and others who had infiltrated the party. Mugabe admitted that the so-called G40 cabal led by Jonathan Moyo had endorsed former First Lady Grace Mugabe to succeed him. He however refused to divulge the whereabouts of his wife Grace, Patrick Zuwowo and Kasaku Weir. It is unclear whether President Moon and Gagana will embrace Mugabe's offer or if he will ask his predecessor to surrender more funds purportedly externalized. Presidential spokesman George Chiramba refused to comment on the latest development. Minnie Lemony allegedly had a fight with her husband in public. Minnie Lemony is one of the most famous media starlets in South Africa, the beauty has been in the industry for many years and she has managed to turn her fame into a thriving business. The beauty recently got married in a record-breaking televised three-part docu-series for Vuzu and since the wedding, there have been ongoing rumors of rubble and paradise in her new marriage. According to Sunday Sun, Minnie Lemony and her husband had a public spat at the Cape Town International Airport. The paper alleges that several sources confirmed that Minnie was shouting at her husband in full. <music> Jacob Zuma and the late Kuzi's son demand to be looked after. Fiza Kalm Tsukla Kuzweo who accused President Jacob Zuma of R at P3 12 years ago died in 2016 leaving a young boy whose father is Jacob Zuma. According to source close to the young boy, it's said that the young boy is struggling to survive because the people who are looking after him are very poor and Mr Zuma is not supporting the child anyhow. Mr Zuma was found not guilty of the charge of R at P and the boy's mom and he does not visit his 12-year-old son when he has time. The boy exists as a result of R at P3, it is very sad and disappointing that people in power can get their way with their wrongdoings. When we tried to get hold of Mr. Zuma to hear his side of the story, his phone took us straight to voicemail. Latest, former President Mugabe to appear before Parliament over missing $15 billion. President Robert Mugabe is set to appear before Parliament to expand on the allegations he made in 2016 that $15 billion worth of diamond revenue went missing. The issue came out yesterday in Parliament during a sitting of the Mines and Energy Portfolio Committee chaired by Norton MP Tambrim Lizwa. Mlizwa said Home Affairs Minister Robert Mpofu. A former mines minister, and his successor, Walter Chidakwa, would also be summoned for grilling over the disappearance of the diamond revenue during their tenure. The Norton legislator told mines minister Winston Chitondo, who had appeared before the committee with mines secretary Munezu Munodawafa, Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation, ZMDC, Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company, ZCDC and Minerals Marketing Corporation of Zimbabwe MCZ, officials, that several key players in diamond mining would also appear before Parliament to give evidence, as the committee embarks on thorough investigations pertaining to leakages in diamond mining. There are no sacred cows in terms of the oversight role of Parliament, and there is nothing that even stops us from calling Mugabe, who first mentioned the issue of the $15 billion from appearing before Parliament and asking him how he came to know about that, Mlizwa said, without specifically mentioning when Mugabe would be summoned. As a new minister, Chitondo might not have an answer now on the issue of the $15 billion, but, as Parliament, 
we have a right to call anyone who is responsible for oral evidence, including Mugabe, Chidakwa and Pofu, who were mines ministers when the diamonds were said to have disappeared, Mlizwa said. He said several players would be questioned, including institutions that benefited from mining concessions in Kiadzwa, among them the army and the police. The Privileges, Immunities and Powers of Parliament Act and Parliament Standing Rules and Orders allow Parliament to summon anyone for oral evidence, except the sitting President, meaning Mugabe can be called to appear before Parliament. In a birthday interview in 2016, Mugabe claimed $15 billion worth of diamond revenue was unaccounted for, a claim that continues to dominate political discussions on accountability. Music of NU MP Prosper Matsuyami, MDCT, raised the issue of the missing $15 billion with Chitondo, demanding that the new minister gives the committee records of diamonds sold, the amount diverted through illicit financial flows and smuggling. Matsuyami said diamond smuggling was prevalent in Kiadzwa, with foreigners camp in Mutare buying the mineral illegally. He claimed some diamonds were being kept at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe RBZ, instead of the MCZ, which was against the MCZ Act. But Mlizwa said the issue was too big to handle for Chitondo, who was new in the ministry, adding that it would require thorough investigations. The only figures of diamond mining revenue, which Chitondo revealed to Parliament, were that in 2016 ZCDC, a subsidiary of ZMDC, produced 961,000 carats, which doubled to 1,8 million in 2017, adding that this year, the company was expected to produce at least 3 million carats. Chitondo told the committee that capacity utilization across the mining sector was low in most minerals except platinum, although he did not get into specific details. It was also revealed that there were several legacy issues bedeviling the mining sector, including mines that were operating illegally. ZCDC Chief Executive Officer Morris Mpofu said selling of diamonds was done through the Kimberley process, which has the figures of Zimbabwe's 2006-2014 sales on their website. Mpofu said to date, ZCDC had compiled a list of 10 people alleged to have been involved in illicit diamond trade in Mutare and the names would be handed over to the Home Affairs Ministry for possible investigation. Masvingo Urban MP Daniel Shumba, ZANU PF, then quizzed them CZ to explain allegations that the country's diamonds were at RBZ vaults and not at the corporation's vaults as required by the law. Acting MCZ Managing Director Mazim Bachand Avenger was said all ZCDC diamonds were at MMCZ. There was an attempt for them to end up at RBZ, but that did not happen. As we speak, they are being evaluated at MCZ, he said. The involvement of the RBZ was that diamonds must be at MMCZ, but the RBZ has security interests in the diamonds so that when they are sold whatever is owed is paid. MPs were also told by Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation ZMDC, Board Chairman David Murangari that the ZMDC board was not consulted when ZCDC was formed and made one of its subsidiaries. Murangari also shocked MPs when he said 75% shareholding of asbestos mining company Shabani Mashhaba Mines SMM, was under ZMDC. But he said he did not know who owns the remaining 25% shares of the comatose mine. The issue opened a Pandora's box over different legacy in corporate governance issues that Chitondo will have to deal with, and several questions over several mines under the ZMDC, which were operating illegally. We only got to know of our being ZCDC's shareholder by copy of a letter, which unfortunately was sent to our corporate secretary and was not addressed to the board chairperson, and I then spoke to former mines secretary Francis Gubianga to operationalize it so that the board could move forward with that role. There was no board consultation and ZMDC was only informed last year and the papers to form ZCDC were done without our knowledge to the extent that I surprisingly found my name on the papers without my knowledge, Moran Guri said.
Minnie Lemony allegedly had a fight with her husband Quinton Jones in public. Minnie Lemony is one of the most famous media starlets in South Africa, the beauty has been in the industry for many years and she has managed to turn her fame into a thriving business. The beauty recently got married in a record-breaking televised three-part docu-series for Vuzu and since the wedding, there have been ongoing rumors of trouble and paradise in her new marriage. According to Sunday Sun, Minnie Lemony and her husband had a public spat at the Cape Town International Airport. The paper alleges that several sources confirmed that Minnie was shouting at her husband in full view of the public. Remember the 9 years old boy who married a 62 years old woman? Yes he is now 12 yocto seconds old, 2017, and what happened next will shock you. Saini Masala and Helen Shebank got married to follow their family traditions in 2014. A nine year old schoolboy tied the knot with his 62 year old bride, who already had five children, in Zimhang, Mpumalanga, South Africa. The bride, who expressed her happiness over the fact that the boy picked her, told the newsman that the boy will continue to live a normal life, as other boys of his age and will later get married to a younger bride. Fast forward to 2017. Strange things continue to happen in this world and sometimes we can only be made silent to see it. This event is more than surprising. A 9-year-old boy named Saini Masala WHO married a 62-year-old woman named Helen. This incident took place in the village of Zimhung Winpu Malanga. South Africa in 2014 this boy became the youngest bride twice in history, because she married Helen twice. There was an informal wedding party last year. Wedding ring Saini Masala and Helen, with high feet Saini Masala married Helen again because she wants an official wedding ceremony in front of the villagers. Villagers thought this huge snake had eaten livestock. Nigerians know they should be on call every second, as predators never sleep. No matter what they do for a living, life in Nigeria is not easy. Thousands of people survive under life-threatening conditions without proper water, food supplies on one hand and a huge risk to suffer from wild animals on the other. This is why locals have learned taking care of their households without any fear being able to defeat almost any predator absolutely barehanded. These men and women know the only working law of wild nature, kill or be killed. So, they mostly choose the first option. Citizens of one tiny village have noticed the current loss of lives stuck under murky circumstances, animals disappeared. That was not only happening under the cloak of the night but at daytime too. So, they were not surprised to find a huge snake not far from their houses once. People saw there was something inside its stomach. Their first thought was, another animal stolen and swollen right where it was, but they were absolutely wrong. Men took out knives to kill the beast and cut it apart. In a moment, they realized it was their lucky day, mommy snake was expecting a few hundreds of cute little snakes to show off from eggs in a while. Such snakes are extremely dangerous, they can kill livestock and never miss a chance to eat people if they are spot walking. <music> Former Mugabe aide reveals the army general's chilling message that forced Mugabe to resign. An aide to former President Robert Mugabe has revealed how generals warned him to step aside as protests against him grew, or face being lynched like Libya's Muammar Gaddafi. Massive street protests against 93-year-old Mugabe erupted after the military briefly took power in November following the veteran leader's sacking of then Vice President, Emerson and Gagwa. Mugabe subsequently resigned after apparently striking a deal with the army and supporters of Mgagana who then succeeded Mugabe. The commanders sent us with a very chilling message, they said please go and get the president to appreciate the gravity of the situation out there, Mugabe's former spokesman, George Tremba, told the Daily News Sunday paper. 
there was the possibility of a Libyan scenario where the president would have been dragged out of the blue roof and lynched, he added, referring to Mugabe's private residence in Harare. Gaddafi was overthrown in 2011 after a violent popular uprising and slaughtered by a mob after he was found hiding in a drainage pipe. Tremba, who now serves as Angagwa's official spokesman, revealed that Mugabe desperately tried to reappoint his former deputy at the height of massive street protests against him. Tremba was heavily involved in the negotiations that eventually led to Mugabe stepping aside. In his interview about the upheaval that shook the country at the end of last year, Shramba also described how Zimbabwean border guards attempted to shoot Angagwa as he sought to flee, fearing for his life. Angagwa recounted a scuffle at the Mozambican border where officials attempted to shoot him, but were disarmed by one of his twin sons, the paper reported. And Gagana has previously said that he feared an attempt would be made on his life after his personal protection officers were withdrawn following his sacking. He subsequently made it to an airstrip where an acquaintance sent a private plane which carried him to South Africa from where he negotiated with Mugabe. By the end of the crisis, even former First Lady Grace Mugabe, whose ambition to succeed her husband was widely credited as a catalyst for the army's intervention, wanted Mugabe to go. Even the First Lady was behind Mugabe's decision to resign, said Shremba. When you have a president who can no longer command institutions he is supposed to lead, there is a problem. But what should be noted is that Mugabe never refused to step down, he wanted to do it in his own way. Balakom sheds a tear for ex-husband Karapitz Gisitsel. Speaker of Parliament Balakom on Tuesday bid an emotional farewell to her ex-husband the late poet laureate Professor Karapitz Gisitsel. Attending the special official funeral service for Gisitsel in Johannesburg was seen with tears rolling down her face during the service. Who also attended a memorial service last week married the then-exiled poet Gisitsel in 1979. The couple had two children together. Gesetzel died in Johannesburg on January 3 at the age of 79 after a short illness. The people's poet is survived by his wife baby Dorcas Gesetzel seven children and several grandchildren. The funeral was attended by politicians, poets, musicians and many other contributors to arts and culture. Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa is expected
Latest, VP Chai Wang exposes Mugabe's lies. Zimbabwe's Vice President, Constantino Chai Wang has exposed lies by the former President Robert Mugabe, who for long claimed he played a crucial role in making sure that President Emerson and Gagwa joins the liberation struggle. While addressing a controversial youth interface rally in Bindura Mugabe told ZANU-PF supporters that he personally invited Dan Gagana to join ZANU, which later became the country's ruling party after independence. Speaking here in Guru where Aunt Gagana was meeting with traditional chiefs, Chai Wenga let the cat out of the bag when he narrated how the current president joined the liberation struggle. Chai Wenga clarified that it was Mugabe who was invited by Aunt Gagua in the then city of Wello to address the liberation nationalists because of his experience with Ghana's political situation. Mugabe had been a teacher in Ghana when nationalists resisted white supremacy and colonial rule. Mugabe has been accused by several academics and historians of rewriting history to suit his tribal and or political agendas, by often downplaying the role of genuine freedom fighters while exaggerating his own contributions, or those of his pawns. Opposition activists have often mocked that Mugabe never fired a gun in his life. Mugabe is not a military man, never was. The closest he came to becoming a military man was his safari suits he wore in the 80s. Wrote Whitlaw Maguiji, a former student leader and renowned writer.